Welcome to Behind the Smoke Screens, where we give you a raw and unfiltered look at what it's like to run a business as young entrepreneurs. In our line of work, we have the pleasure of creating relationships with a variety of characters. Influencers, athletes, models, digital media gurus, CEOs, and industry experts. And we'll be inviting them on to share with you. Sit back, grab a sip and a smoke as we take you behind the smoke screens. Welcome everybody to Behind the Smoke Screens. This episode is presented by Ice Age Management, McDonald's. Ooh. Shout out. We have Sammy Phillips here from La Polina Cigars. Justin Andrews from Diesel Cigars. This is a live show, so there's a lot of background noise. We're making a lot of noise. We're having events. We're having a good time. Hell yeah, we are. How are you feeling, boys? Fantastic. I'm, I got a little flutter with how deep your voice was there, Philip really Michael. Like I mean, deep, sultry, you went sexy. right into like the uh, mm. AM radio voice right yeah. there. I mean, it's like it old school, AM like radio slow too. jam, smooth. This, is, this is just hey, see you, Matt. This is what we do on uh, behind the smoke screens. Behind the so, Philip Michael, what what is the whole behind the smoke screen? What's the theme of it? So, like, what how we did do, you come up with that? What we do is we try to get behind people like you. Very important successful entrepreneurs we try to get behind what they're actually putting out there and we want to see how you deal with it how you cope with life and and how you how you push yourself and motivate yourself on a daily basis i love that so i'm certainly an entrepreneur i have a a crazy entrepreneurial spirit Mm -hmm. outside of the premium cigar category and i know that justin andrews does as well and i don't know because so justin and i and i don't know if you know this but justin and i are old friends we're old school, like back to when he owned his own brand. Whoa. <laughs> Regis. Old school. Before Regis acquired Justin Andrews, which was the best hire I think he's ever made. By the way, by the by. I, I, I couldn't argue with that, but I will say that was the day that I lost my entrepreneur spirit. Right no there. No <laughs> bullshit. It, it lives inside of you. Can it we does. talk about some of your other ventures tonight? That, or are we going to leave that off the table? I, what I was this the brand? Is, this is a cigar conversation. We're going to talk about cigars tonight, baby. That's it. You know what, what? What was the brand that I, you used to have? Actually, Philip Michael, you and your father were one of the first accounts in North Carolina that brought in my old brand, Lou Rodriguez Cigars. Lou Rod. Back in, two, Rod, back in 2000. Did you, did you yeah. see how his North Kakalaki accent came right in? You know, y'all, when you and your daddy, and, my, and there was a goat, and maybe a horse, and maybe a cow, <laughs> but y'all done supported me. Look, I'm just a simple guy trying to sell cigars. <laughs> Make a little bit of money. Not too much money, but just a little bit. So, yeah. seriously, though, Justin and I are very old friends, mm. and he has a true entrepreneurial spirit inside of him. And I think that most of the guys that are in the premium cigar category do, much like yourself, whether you're on the retail side or whether you're on the manufacturing side. You've got to have that spirit, that you have fire, to. right, buddy? You have to. Otherwise, you wouldn't put up with the amount of shit that we have to put up with on a daily you basis. Mean bullshit. Yeah, that's exactly right. So bullshit. We're either crazy or entrepreneur. There, there, there's some description there for I sure. I mean, it's. I think it's sort of, you know, it all folds together, right? That is true. You're, you're crazy as shit, and there's an entrepreneurial spirit. So we're here with Philip Michael from Havana Fills in Greensboro, North Carolina, and we're here behind the smoke screen. Mm-hmm. Whatever the fuck that means. What does it mean? I don't know. I just told you. I mean, I love to be behind the smoke screen. I mean, a whole lot. You know, it's interesting, right? Because I think there are a lot of people, Justin, that that they they don't know anything about premium cigars. And I think that if you look at our our audience, our consumers, a lot of them don't know a lot about cigars from the upshop. They walk in. It's not the most approachable business. They don't know how to cut a cigar, light a cigar, ask for a cigar, so they go back to the classics, right? And we'll go to your company. The great General Cigar Company, probably the largest cigar company in North America, maybe the world. King of the classics. The king of the classics. When we talk about Macanudo Portofino, 
that's a cigar that people walk into. Mm -hmm. They talk about Macanula. They talk about, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ebb and flow here. They talk about Partagas. They talk about Punch. They talk about Upman. They talk about Romeo, even though I know that's not yours. Right. Don't bitch slap me. But they talk about those classics. Cohiba. And then they walk into a place like Havana Phil's, and you have a true enthusiast and tobacco perfectionist like Philip Michael who knows his shit. And it's rare in our business where he can guide you through the murky waters. That's like right. this beautiful, That's I'm right. going to light this cigar up that you gave me. I'm smoking a Sigali right now. Fantastic cigar. Blended by Philip Michael and perfected on the thighs of Nish Patel. But I'm going <laughs> to set this down for just a second because I was gifted with this beautiful product from Justin Andrews. Justin, why don't you tell everybody about this cigar, Bubba? So that is our newest Cohiba. That is our Cohiba Siri M. M <laughs> being for Miami. Uh, we made it extra hard to, to open just to build the anticipation. It's extra hard. There. But that is the first Cohiba ever made in the United States. Uh, we, we partnered with, uh, with my newly best friend, Sandy at El Titan de Bronze. Oh, Sandy Cobots. In, in Miami. And uh, that is uh, it's pretty special. Now, it is sold out, so if you haven't got one now, you might not. Philip, Michael, I don't know. You probably still have a few boxes left. a few boxes. Maybe, but they're, they're going fast. But, yeah, you've got the first Cohiba with a Nicaraguan Corojo wrapper. So there's a lot of firsts there for that. Made in Miami, Nicaraguan Corojo wrapper. And My mouth about, is watering already. Talk about the foot on that. What's the foot? So we have a clo situation? we have a closed foot, and again, as Sammy mentioned earlier, this isn't the most easiest like thing to consume. You roll up to a bar, you get a beer, you get a bourbon, you get a scotch. It's pretty easy. But with a cigar, there there's a whole methodology behind. You got to cut it, you got to light it, and it's a little it's a little intimidating for people that don't know. So that closed foot, for those of us that do know, it gives you a little bit of a a whiff, a hint of that tobacco as you're pre-lighting it, as you're toasting the foot, gives you that little hint of flavor just to give you a little bit of anticipation as to what you're gonna enjoy for the rest of the cigar there. Would you say it helps you make it light it more even? Actually, I would probably say the opposite. So what we, what we found is, any, now that's a pretty tight closed foot. You know, you have some that have like shaggy foot or a long closed foot, it actually will, will kind of burn uneven if you don't light it correctly. And for a lot of people, lighting a cigar is a challenge. Sammy seems to be a professional there, <laughs> right at it. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> but my, I love a closed foot just because, again, most people, you just toast the foot, you char it, mm -hmm. and then you start smoking. But that little bit of tobacco at the end there, uh, it's, just, it, it's just perfect. I would love to tell Justin Andrews that I wasn't impressed. But I gotta tell you, buddy, on the real, and I know you know we work intimately with Sandy and Giselle and the entire team at El Titan de Bronze. I am thoroughly impressed with where I've started the cigar. You front loaded the cigar. There's a lot of tobacco coming right at you. A lot of tobacco, it's a lot of fucking, flavor. It's fucking solid. We wanted it to be different from any other Cohiba that's ever been made uh, mm. from any of our factories, and I got to give Sandy and Giselle and the whole team their credit. It is, uh, it's exceeded my expectations. How does that wow. stack up versus the Goldie? Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm it's asking It's a completely you. different experience. Absolutely. Totally different experience. Mm. Goldie is super hyper Cuban-esque. It's creamy, it's buttery, it's elegant, it's smooth. And, um, you know, this cigar, this Cohiba that they've made here, the Siri M, is big. It's bold, it's robust, it's got a nice, like, it's almost like a, I wouldn't say it's a white pepper, I wouldn't say it's a black pepper, it's almost like a red pepper spice as it sort of glides across the palate. It's fucking big, man. Which is, it? You are, you're so spot on because we actually, most of our Cohibas are, you know, they're, they're, they're easy on the palate, it's an easy cigar to smoke. We wanted something that was more Nicaraguan-esque, had a little more of that pepper, a little more of that spice, a little more transition. We wanted it to be very different from our Dominican Cohiba, from our Honduran Cohiba, and I think uh, I, I think we hit it out of the park with that. But it, I would say, uh, on the spectrum, it's it's completely opposite from like a Goldie, for sure. Totally. Not Cuban esque at all. A lot of flavor. It's it's meant for the guys that normally wouldn't smoke Cohiba. You got to right. remember when when Bill and Sandy met, El Titan de Bronze, 
and, and Sandy and Bill and our good friend Pete Johnson, mm-hmm. who I know Justin is very good friends with, <laughs> they would all agree that when Bill decided to make the Goldie and God rest her soul, Maria Sierra was still alive, she was the only person that at the time was rolling, rolling Goldies. And when you talk about her history and Fidel Castro and how she was rolling personally for Fidel Castro and, and, and what the makeup, all the rollers at Goldie, Mm-hmm. I love that Nish Patel is walking by and the phone is ringing. I just got to just... It's a live show, folks. Just, it's a live show. This is show. a live show, baby. And what a ring tone he had, yeah, too. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. It's fantastic. It's super mm-hmm. Bollywood. But what happened was all the rollers that El Titan the Bronze are, are master level Cuban 9 rollers or above. Right. They're all Cubans. So when people talk about Cuban tobacco, when they talk about Cuban cigars, when they talk about the Cuban methodology, that is a lie that El Titan the Bronze. So when Bill went there... Bill is my, just for everybody who's watching behind the smoke screens who don't know who I am or don't know what La Polina is or don't know what Goldie is, my business partner, Bill Paley, my brand is 125 years old. Justin, I'm going to repeat that. 125 nice. years old this year. And as mm. we release our 125th anniversary at the trade show this year, there you go. You wanted some shit? Mm-hmm. <laughs> there it is. So Breaking news. And by the way, that cigar is, I can't wait. Breaking news on, on behind the smoke screen. So. Are, 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 are we here are we and we have had a couple of it's cocktails. It's not half wheel. Coming it's out. live, baby. It's live, baby. It's live, baby. Live to tape. So what happens is you go into El Titan and you've got a very small sect of people that are rolling. And it's hyper boutique. And I love the fact that a, that a company like General Cigar came in. You're talking about master rollers, Cuban level nine, which is the top of the top of the top percentage of all people that roll cigars. And then you start to play with tobacco. And if you look at a brand like La Polina and you look at Goldie and you look at something that's hyper Cuban in it, super approachable for anybody, and it, and it just marries with all the different flavors. And you've got the highest altitude of all Medio Tiempo and what we would consider to be all Medio Tiempo out of our secret farm. You have a very special flavor. Absolutely. And then when I smoke Justin's cigar, this beautiful Cohiba cigar, and it is so different. It makes me so fucking happy, dude. Because it just shows that if you take true entrepreneurial spirit, true craftsmanship, and ingenuity from a guy like Justin Andrews, and they can put these fucking flavors together, because he works with A.J. Fernandez. They work with their own factories, and they start to marry these flavors. You get something like this beautiful cigar that's so different. It's almost different from anything in your portfolio. Absolutely. I'm so proud of you guys, dude. Man, I'm telling you. It was, uh, I don't even know how to follow that up. <laughs> that, that, was, that was better. I need, I need to get you to do my press release next time. I just did it. Put it, it's put it, on, put it on the side. Behind the smoke screen, bitches. I, I, I will tell you, for me personally, going, into, phenomenal. going into Sandy's factory... And to Sammy's point, not only seeing the level nine rollers, but to know that they don't, they don't even work in pairs. So like if you come to our factory, any of our three factories in Honduras, the Dominican Republic and Nicaragua, we have pairs, you have bunchers and rollers. At El Titan, you have one person that is bunching the cigar and rolling the cigar. Their name is on every box. And to see that level of craftsmanship go into each and every cigar. And I will tell you, we, all of us have some pretty powerful moments within this industry. But we had Sandy's Rollers working on this cigar for about six months and they had no idea what they were rolling. They didn't have a clue. They didn't, they didn't know who I was, which m- many people don't. They didn't know who my <laughs> boss was, which is fine. But when we, when, when we rolled in towards the end of production and we brought them the Cohiba Siri M box, when you take these, these immigrants from Cuba that have come from that regime, have come from rolling in those factories, they're in Miami, and we show them a Cohiba box, and then they realize that the cigars that they've been rolling for the last eight months have been a Cohiba made in Miami, made in the USA. They started banging their Chevettas on the table. It was one of the most powerful moments I've ever had Mm -hmm. in this industry. And honestly, it kind of just encapsulated everything that we do. And I was like, this is what it's all about right here. We added some value to these people's lives. They took pride in it. And the fact that they can now go that in Miami, I made a Cohiba, unbelievable. I want you to, Philip Michael. Hey, that's what it's all about. Think about That's behind the smoke screens right there, Sammy. First of all, made in the USA. Yeah. Second of all, 
I changed people's lives. Yeah. The, this is the only factory mm. in fucking the United States of America legally that is rolling cigars. And when I mean rolling cigars, a mm. lot of these factories, what, what, what they, they call rolling cigars, is applying wrapper. Right. So what Justin and I do on all these rolling tours, right, <laughs> is we'll go through myself, Nish Patel, Justin Andrews, and they're like, hey, can you roll a cigar? I'm like, hell yeah, we can roll a cigar. <laughs> and they put the binder and yeah. the filler, yeah. right? So you have the tripa, the banda, and the capa. Mm. Or the, I'm sorry. The three for the bond of the cow. There you go. <laughs> we've, had some, we've had some fucking drinks tonight. It's been a long night. Smoke it, screens. Nish, you're yes, in front sir. of the, Nish, you're in front of the cameras. Dude, so, once in a while you can just like let him speak. <laughs> it's a live show. So what happens oh, is a, live show? a lot of yeah. these a lot of these cigar, a lot of these cigar companies and a lot of the, the companies down in Little Havana, Miami, they're applying right wrapper. They yeah, take yeah, the binder, right. they no, take the filler, like the and they're applying the wrapper. What okay. L Titan of Bronze is doing is taking all of those components and putting all of those components together. So when Justin applies whatever he applies to this Cohiba, mm -hmm. so if he takes his Nicaraguan tobaccos and he places his Nicaraguan tobaccos and says, okay, here's the binder for the Nicaraguan tobaccos. Here's the fillers for the Nicaraguan. Here's mm -hmm. the wrapper for the Nick." And he creates this cigar. It's the only place in the United States that you can do that. That's it. Where? And it's fucking yeah. wild. Where? El Titan de Bronze. What? Little, That's little Havana, Miami. You can do what? They're the only factory Nish. Nish is off camera right now, everybody, but he's had a couple of cocktails, too. And no, he's... I have not, but I'm starting to. What have you had? He's ready to roll. I just had some mezcal, some tequila, and some martinis. Okay, so he's just getting started with seven, eight. Drinks. I feel like we need, to, on, we, need to, we, need to, we need to make some room here. So, Justin, we've, we've gone over all your brands. It was amazing to listen to you. We really, really appreciate you coming on. But let's sub you out for Nish. That let's is, get this shit rolling. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. A quick sub out. Holy we can shit. Out Fucking that Justin is, Andrews. No, hey, done. Justin, you got to remind me to send you those pictures of when we were in NICA, too, because I got oh. a lot of pictures. There's some good ones. Too. Did Boofy send those to you? Hey, hey, by the way, you'll never get them, because yeah. anything he promises you like that <laughs> will never happen. And Justin, by the way, we... We only talked about your shit, and Sammy didn't talk about La Polina like once. No, that's true. Yeah. That's true. But Sammy, there's a video from that from that <laughs> trip to Honduras that I'm really interested in getting a, a copy of. Let's roll, Little bro. Panoramic view, you and yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. May or may not have been partial nudity. I don't know. Uh, can we can we clip that and put it on the the pod? By the way, we don't want to see it because I've seen him nude ever plenty wants of to see times. That. My wife saw it. And that, I mean, that was it. I mean, I think Nick saw it too. All right, well, we're going to have to clip it and put it on. 